Hi everybody, it's Michelle Hotchkiss, and recently I posted some photos of some journaling cards that I've been making. I posted them on the Journaling Bible Community Facebook page, and I had some people ask me how I make them. And what I've been doing with these little cards is I've been putting them in my prayer binder. And so I'm not going to go over how to make these journaling cards that I've been doing with the foil on them. I'm going to put a link down below to the the video of the lady where I learned how to do this. She's already done it and she it's a great video, very easy to follow and to understand and I just do exactly what she does except I rather than printing just on white cardstock, I've been printing on scrapbook paper and card scrapbook cardstock through my laser printer. And so, I'm not going to talk anymore about these because I will put that link below and then you can follow that link to find out how to do this if that's what you desire. So right now um, I'm going to do a flip through of my prayer journal or prayer binder, whatever you want to call it. I just call it a prayer journal. I've gotten these ideas from other people and then I've just kind of tailored it a little bit to fit my personal needs. The first person that I have based what I do for my prayer journal on is a lady named Carrie D. K A R I D E E. And she has a blog and it's Stone Soup for Five. Stone Soup for Five at blogspot, blogspot.com. And I'll put the link to her post below on how she set up her prayer journal. I've, I've done mine a lot like she has. There's also another lady who is, her name is Edith, and she's 93, 94, something like that. And this lady has done a wonderful video where she goes through her prayer journal. And let me tell you, this lady has been um, praying longer than most of us have been alive. <laughs> so she has a lot of wisdom. And she has some really great ideas that I've also incorporated into this, such as the paperclip tracker kind of thing that I'll explain a little bit later in this. I'll put the video, her video link, down below also. And at the end of this video, she prays, and it just thrills me like, I don't know what, um, when she prays. It's almost like having a grandma pray for you. I never had a gra grandma that prayed for me when I, well, I don't know, I guess I did have a grandma that prayed, but I didn't really know her, so, you know, it just makes me wish this lady was my grandma, I think that would be so cool. <laughs> anyway, um, enough of that, because I don't even know if that made any sense. Okay, my prayer journal. This is just a half binder um, that I had my mom pick up for me at Target. It holds insert sizes of eight and a half by five sheets of paper. So even if you had eight and a half by eleven paper, um, you know you could cut make your own paper inserts for those by cutting it in half and just hole punching it. So it, it's a pretty nice size to have, and it's just a three ring binder. So it doesn't have a lot of the weird you know hole punches where they have four or six or seven or just really odd numbers that make it difficult to use. Um, this one is just a simple three ring binder and I just use my regular hole punch, um, a three hole punch that I've kind of adjusted for the sizes and it works wonderfully. So I don't didn't have to buy anything special for this. The way I have my um, Bible journal set up here again is not anything that I have figured out on my own. I've learned it from other people. Um, Carrie D. I think has probably modeled hers after this book here somehow in, in some ways I think she's she recommends this book and I'm I'm still reading it I haven't gotten through it very far but as you can see it's available on Kindle and it's not very expensive but this is called the hour that changes the world a practical plan for personal prayer and it's by Dick Eastman. The whole idea behind the prayer binder or the prayer journal for me is that I felt that I really wanted to be more intentional in my prayer life, more focused and more organized. Um, 
I prayed a lot, but I have to say it was just kind of randomly throughout the day um, or before bed or actually in bed. And, you know, it was hard for me to get keep my focus on what I was praying about or even sometimes, to be honest, hard not to fall asleep, you know, or just get distracted while I was trying to pray. So once I started Bible journaling, I actually then started doing Bible studies, which I don't think I had ever really done a Bible study before. So Bible journaling has really evolved into branched out into a lot further areas for me personally, which I think is just amazing. And, and I just feel so much different in my walk with God. And I feel so much different in my relationship with, with Christ. And so now I actually have a desire to be a little bit more intentional about the things I'm doing, such as prayer. So this is how my prayer binder is set so, up. First thing, when I open this up, you know, I just have little journaling cards. Most of them are scriptures. Not all of them, like that one's not, but that's okay. I made myself a little pouch to keep my pins in. This didn't fit the size here for my my binder. It was much longer, so, you know, this is just reused from something else. I just cut the bottom off and put masking tape over the bottom to seal it up. And now I have a perfect little, and then hole punched it. Now I have a perfect little pocket pouch. <clears throat> so I have all my pins available. And when I when I do my prayer, I like to do it in the mornings. Um, I have to say I don't always do it in the mornings. But for me, that seems to be just the best time for me um, to really sit down and just focus on what I'm praying about. Also, I, I have to really uh, stress this point. This is not something that needs to be rigid and um, to cause condemnation. You don't, if you miss a day or something, you know, you can't get to prayer or, or it doesn't, it just doesn't turn out how you think it should turn out. Don't beat yourself up. I mean, let's give ourselves a break. God, God honors our efforts. And let me tell you, it gets easier with practice, but this is definitely not something to um, to set yourself up for failure. This is something to have a closer walk with God. If it gets to that point, something's wrong. Something's out of balance and your base, you know, if it's me, if I get like that, I'm setting myself up for failure. So just be mindful of what this is and know that, you know, God knows that we're human and we're going to have good days and bad days. And, and as we still continue to draw closer to him, He's going to teach us how to pray and do the things that he wants us to do as long as we're open to them. You know, and even if you fail at it once, doesn't mean that you fail at it forever. It's just, you know, pick yourself up and do it again. It, it takes practice just like everything else. And if you're having trouble still with prayer, take it to God, you know, and ask him how to show you how to do it, set it up and to do it, what works for you and him both. Okay, so let's move on. As I said, I like to do this first thing in the morning. So, you know, I have a little bit of just decorations here that I've done on the dividers. And the way I have this set up, which I have to say still changes. It's, it's still evolving to what works best for me. And in fact, just the other night, I changed some things to make it easier for me because there was some parts where I was getting frustrated. So I have this, I have this in sections. I have sections that I pray every day. And this looks like a lot, but this is broken up into subsections also. And so I'll get into that in a few minutes on um, explaining about the subsections. And then this is a section that I do once, once a week. Um, and I'll, I'll get into that more as we go along. So the first thing that I do is I like to start it out, start my prayer time out with um, just praising God. 
Um, and so I have just different ways of praising God. You know, what is praise? Um, things that that are important to me about praising God. Some people could spend this time singing. And let me tell you, nobody wants me to sing. So, you know, <laughs> that's not something that I usually do during this time because... Oh my gosh, what do you think God thinks about that when you got somebody singing and, you know, they really can't sing? I'm sure he's just like any parent who just like, oh, you know, love is blind, love is deaf, and uh, he just sees the heart of it rather than the than the uh, <laughs> squawking that it might really be. So <laughs> anyway, uh, I'm getting off track. So first of all, or let me go back here. I also have a timer that I use to keep track. And this is something that Carrie D. recommends. And this is just to, to help keep on track, basically, um, to keep it manageable. So basically, for each section that I'm going to pray for that day, I spend a, a maximum of, well, not even a maximum, I aim for two minutes and 30 seconds per each section and this is a repeat timer that I can just push and every two and a half minutes it'll beep and it'll do that for five times and um, so that just tells me when I need to move on and the name of this app I think is just the repeat timer let me see yeah repeat timer so that just is, is a kind of a timekeeping tool that you can use, that I use. I find it helpful. Now, again, this is one of those things that you don't want to be so rigid on that if you can't make it for a full two and a half minutes, you know, oh, horrible me, I'm in trouble. No, that's not it at all. Um, some sections, depending on what the day is like or what I felt led to pray about, some sections I'll spend maybe 30 seconds on. Um, and then the next session, section I'll spend three or four minutes on, just depending on how I feel what needs to be prayed about in my spirit for that day. So this is just a tool. It's not a law. Okay, just to help. Something to help. So let's get back to the sections. So my first section that I would spend, and these first few sections, I always make sure that I do the two and a half minutes. Because if I can't spend two and a half minutes praising God, even if it is with an awful song that I'm trying to sing, <laughs> if I can't spend two and a half minutes doing that, there's something wrong there with me and my spirit. And I, you know, some days you're having bad days and you don't feel it. But I personally believe that I still... Even in those bad times, if I'm not feeling it, that's probably when I need to praise God more than on the times when I'm really feeling it. Um, because there's something going on in my spirit that, you know, I need to connect to God about. So, I always make sure that I spend the first two and a half minutes praising God. My next se section, and this is a personal one, is praying in the spirit. I personally believe in praying in the spirit or praying in tongues. I'm not going to get into all the, you know, theological things about that. But that's just something personal with me that I believe in. And so I spend, I make sure and I, that I spend two and a half minutes minimum just doing that. Um, and let me tell you, two and a half minutes goes by really fast when you have something that you're praying about or that you're, when you know what you're supposed to do during, during those two and a half minutes. Um, when you're just kind of randomly trying to pray for two and a half minutes, it's hard to fill up that two and a half minutes sometimes. So being focused, having a focused topic for each section really helps me fill the time. My third section that I always do for two and a half minutes is silence or listening to God. And this is where I am asking God to quiet my mind, quiet my spirit, you know, 
just to be open to listening to him, to not be, you know, randomly thinking about everything that rolls through my brain at any given moment, but to just quietly focus on him. And so I do that for two and a half minutes. And it really, it's really not that hard to do, I'm finding. Um, it's not like yoga meditation or whatever where you empty yourself. It's not like that at all. It's just um, being open to hearing God's voice. And there's actually been a couple times where I have, you know, I know it's been God either showing me something um, that has just been pretty interesting and, and, and exciting. So this to me has become really important. Um, and even if, you know, I feel like I don't get anything from God that during that time on that particular day, it's, it's still, you know, teaching myself how to be open to hearing the Lord. So these first three sections, two and a half minutes each. So that's seven and a half minutes. Now, this next section is me. Let me get through here. And this is the section on me that I pray. I pray for myself every day, but I don't pray everything in here every day. I have myself, I have different subtopics for myself. And so, but there are a couple that I do pray every single day. Here's some more of those journaling cards. A little pocket in case I need to put anything in there. Anyway, this is one that I pray every single day. And I got this from Carrie D, which I think she might have got from that book. But I'm not sure because if it's in the book, I haven't gotten there yet. Anyway, I did um, tailor this to myself. But I find this really incredibly useful um, to do every single day. Self-reflection and confession. And basically, this is reviewing myself for the last 24 hours. In the last 24 hours, did I avoid doing something I should have done? Did I fail God in any of my personal conduct? Was I honest with God, myself, and others? Were my, what were my thoughts like? Did I depend on myself or on God? Did I honor God with my actions? Did I monitor my motives? And the purpose here is to be aware of my activities, not to cause condemnation or feelings of failure. I can't change things that I'm not aware of. So this is really just a self-awareness thing because I want to be a person that God can say, I am a woman after his own heart. And for me personally, that involves, you know, examining myself um, and finding areas where I struggle um, and just being aware of my behavior and my thoughts. Um, so, again, it's not anything to be self, you know, to condemn yourself over. It's just being aware. And then God already knows what we've done. Um, so nothing we've done or haven't done is a surprise to him. So when we go to him and confess things, it's not, it's pretty silly to pretend like God doesn't know, you know, and try to hide things from him. And that's where, you know, being honest with God and yourself comes in. Because if we can't be honest with ourselves, we can't be honest with God. So, <laughs> you know, it's, it's just a process of, of really learning being self-aware all the time of what's rolling around in my brain. Because a lot of this stuff really has to do with, you know, the mental thoughts that I have and mental attitudes and, and things like that. I mean, if to be honest, if what, what, what if people could see everything that rolled around in my brain, that would be kind of a scary thing. <laughs> and, you know, I hope everybody's, I'm sure everybody's like that, you know, because, hey... I'm human. I'm not going to pretend like I'm, you know, any better than what I am. Um, but sometimes the things that go on in my head, you know, just aren't the way that I want to be. So this helps me with that. Um, and as for the time frame on this, 
sometimes I can fill up the two and a half minutes on this. Sometimes I need to go a little bit longer. But sometimes I actually can't fill up the two and a half minutes on this page. To be honest, there are days when I can't remember what I did. I can't remember, you know, if I avoided something I should have done. Um, I can't remember if I depended on myself or God. So there's days when I just go to God and say, Lord, I don't remember. So if I have done any of these things that I need to be aware of, please show me so I can help change my character and change whatever it is in me um, to become a woman after God's own heart. Okay, the next section sections, these are my subsections. And so, okay, my time frame on this was seven and a half. And then if I did two and a half on that, let's just say I did two and a half. So that would be 10 minutes doing this first section here. Now the, I'm going to write that down. Otherwise I'm going to forget it. Now these next sections for myself are subsections. I do... I, let me see how many I have. I have one, two, three, four, five, six subsections. And I rotate these daily, so I don't pray these every single day. I just do one section on one day, and I do the next section the next day. And my sections are my life in Christ, because as I just spoke about, it's really important for me to become a woman after God's own heart and to develop the myself into the person that God created me to be um, that you know was gotten off track by life and things so that's another one of my journaling cards and this actually is kind of a journaling spot conversations between me and me and God me and Jesus and um, you know the things that are important to me on how I want to be as a as a Christian um, also verses in here and that speak to me. So th this is an ongoing journaling kind of area that base solely deals with my life in Christ and my walk with Christ. My next section is relationships, and that is for, you know, be a godly wife, godly mom, mother, grandmother, friend, um, daughter, honor my parents, things like that. So just relationships. The other section I have here is work or art. And right now art is my work. So I believe that God has given me the gift of, for, of art that I didn't know I had until a couple years ago when um, I got really sick with multiple sclerosis. And I wasn't able to do my former profession, which was one of those really crazy uh, government jobs that, well, I, I administered welfare programs and, and a lot of welfare clients and uh, policies and procedures. And so it was really one of those A-type personality type jobs that, you know, never ended even when you came home. So anyway, um, I just... God has given me this gift of art, and I think it's very important for me to honor that that ability that He's given me. And so that's right now. That's how I, you know, make some money. I sell my artwork, and this also isn't just dealing with art or work. This has to do with cleaning and organizing my home. You know, duties, everyday duties that need to be done. Um. And also to maintain correct priorities, you know, not to be so focused on one area of my life that I neglect another area that I should be taking care of. Um, so that is that section. The next section is health and healing because, you know, I like I said, I was diagnosed with multiple sclerosis and I've had a lot of issues with that. But I'm still praying that I will be fully healed. You know, and no one's ever going to talk me out of that because I've read it in the Bible and that's what I'm going for. So my last, oh no, not my last, the next section for me is emotions and character. 
Um, I don't want to be an emotion ruled person. You know, I want to be a balanced person. There's a, of course, you need to have and respect your emotions, but, um, you know, emotions aren't always right. Sometimes our emotions are totally wrong, and when we act on them, we get ourselves into trouble. At least I have in the past. Anyway, so it's really important for me to not be, you know, just um, a slave to my emotions. And I have to say that I, I'm not an overly emotional person, so that hasn't truly been a problem for me to just, you know, be really emotional and things like that. My problem actually has been on the opposite end of the spectrum of, Sometimes just not being emotional or emotional enough, you know, being more logical and just, you know. So anyway, there, everything has to be a balance. And I believe that our emotions definitely play into our character. Um, they play into having integrity, being kind and compassionate, having peace, having joy and being merciful to people. Um, so... I tie the emotions in with character. And I want to feel the opposite end of the spectrum with emotions. I want to feel the joy of the Lord, you know, and and God's peace and things like that. So, you know, emotions, I think, just all play a big part in that. So that that's a section for me. Um, and at the, the very last section I have for myself is personal or miscellaneous prayer requests. Like, you know, this one, quick recovery um, from my surgery, able to sleep, things like that. So these are just miscellaneous pro requests. And so that's my subsections. And this is what I do with them. Like I said, I don't pray these every day. I use this paper clip here. And that is my tracker on what I need to pray for that day. So when I woke up today... Let's say I wake up right now and I'm ready to start my morning prayer. I come to this subsection for myself and I see that my paper clip is on work slash art. So I know this is what I'm going to pray for today. Where God, God, where do you want me to go with my art? You know, is there anything I need to do? You know, I have no idea how to promote myself or anything like that. And I think God has a plan, but I don't know what it is. Um, and, you know, I just have no idea where God wants me to go with my art. So it's really important for me to pray this. So that's what I will spend two and a half minutes or maybe less. You know, like I said, two and a half minutes is just a guide. It's not a rule. Um, just basically on, on my art. And also, when I pray about... I pray about my art because, again, I believe God gave me this gift when I was sick and I lost the ability to do a whole lot of things. It's like God, you know, just gave me a gift that he had been holding, waiting for the perfect time to give me. And then, you know, so I picked up a pencil and paper and I started drawing. My drawings are pretty rough, but then pretty soon I'm doing things like this. You know, this is all in pen. There's no pencil in there. I didn't do any pencil, you know, pen. If you make a mistake, well, there actually are ways to hide it. But, you know, this this is a God thing. This is not anything that I've come up. And there's times where I've actually been stuck. And, you know, I didn't know how to do something. I get to a point where I just feel kind of lost. And I will pray and I'll go, God, you know, what do I do next? And I'll walk away for a little bit. And then when I come back. It just and I start in it again. It just works, and that is a an amazing gift. And I really re want to honor God with that. Um. So anyway, I kind of got off track. Sorry about that. Um. So let's just move on. So okay, after I would spend time praying for that today so then I know that tomorrow I need I will be praying for health and healing in my section right here so that's pretty easy that's another two and a half minutes so right now that's twelve and a half minutes if I'm spending absolutely the top maximum amount of time right there 
So then I go to the rest of the sections that I pray every day. And those sections are for my husband, my daughter, and my son. And this is what I did just the other day when I was saying that I changed things up. I have, um, you know, specific things that I want all of my family members to have in their life. And what I was doing is I would pray for Mark, my husband, and then I'd pray it again for my daughter, and then I'd pray it again for my son, all separately, as well as my grandkids and my son-in-law. And I was just really getting burned out praying the exact same thing over how many times? One, two, three, four, six times, you know, in a row, every single day. I was getting really burned out on that. And so I condensed all of the general things that I want for each of my family members just onto one page. And so I pray these over my husband, my daughter, her husband my two grandkids, and my son, I pray these just general prayer for everybody. So that's what this page is. And it includes things like true salvation, protection, health, emotions, favor, wisdom and knowledge, godly self-image, character, goals and dreams, and relationships. These are things I want for everybody. So that works for me. Instead of doing each single person, repeating these for each person, I do that general right there for all of them. And I'm much less frustrated. This works much better for me. And then what I have in the subsections for, or actually they're not subsections, sections, but then I have the sections for my husband, my daughter, and her family, and my son. And these are where I go into very specific specific things for that person that I want to pray about. Um, let's say, let's say like my little granddaughter here. Um, she hasn't been bringing home her homework. So a specific prayer is for her to bring home her homework. That's not something I would have on this general page. That's something specifically to her that she's struggling with right now. Um, so that's just a little example. So... You know, and that might take, you know, this might take a little bit more than two and a half minutes. Um, but it might not, you know. I haven't really timed it yet. And again, I'm not really sticking hard and fast to a timer. So that doesn't really bother me. But I'll just put another two and a half minutes. So that right there is 15 minutes. Within 15 minutes maximum, basically, I've prayed for, I've worshipped God. I've had silent time. I've done some personal praying in the spirit. I prayed for each of my family members. I prayed for myself and my my uh, daily um, what was it? My daily self-reflection. Um, so that's all in 15 minutes and being focused like that I've covered a lot of ground and that like I said before that 15 minutes goes by quickly when you have a focus instead of just randomly trying to Say, okay, I'm going to pray for 15 minutes and then trying to figure out what to do within that 15 minutes. This helps me so much more. Now, this section right here is my weekly section. And I use the paperclip tracker again. And so I rotate these days. And so tomorrow. Let me go through my sections here. I have one for family. That's This is extended family. My in-laws, cousins, you know, whoever. Extended family. My friends, and that includes Facebook friends who need prayer. Um, the church, and that's not only my local church. Um, it's also the body of Christ in general around the world because, you know, Christians are under a whole lot of persecution right now. So I think it's incredibly important to pray for that. Um, and then the last section, which is the one that I will pray for tomorrow, because I have my little paperclip tracker. When So as soon as I'm done praying for this one tomorrow, I will move this one back up, and I will pray the next day for family, extended family. 
anyway, for the this one that I'll be doing tomorrow is city, state, and the USA and the world. And, you know, so I have prayers about my little town that I live in. The state of Alaska. Um, we have a lot of stuff going on with issues and a lot of drugs and things like that coming into the state. Plus, we have a lot of earthquakes and things like that. So, you know, I pray protection over the state of Alaska. And then... The USA, you know, our government, uh, elected officials, political parties, our military, first responders, the race wars that are going on right now, police shootings, gay marriage, abortions, fires, droughts, um, you know, you name it, whatever's going on in our country, I pray for that, um, as well as protection, and, and I still believe that, you know, God can bless America. I think there's plenty of us Christians that God will still respect our prayers. So, and then the last part is the world. You know, and you can see there's not too much in this right now. But, of course, ISIS and all the terrorism things that are going on. And the refugee crisis that's happening from all that. You know, those, those are just things that are really important for me to pray about. Now, this last section right here. And I'm going to cover this up because... Oh, that's just a weird sketch of my cat that I did when I was testing out some pins. Kind of off topic. Sorry about that. Anyway, I'm going to just cover this up because there's personal information for myself. I mean, uh, for people. This bottom part, I don't care if anyone sees. This is a section that I pray for daily. And I have these little tabs up here that remind me. I don't really need those in there anymore, but they kind of help. So the, the paper clip reminds me that this is something to pray for every day. So basically, anything that has a paper clip on it gets prayed for on that day. Um, this one never moves, though. I always keep this one here. And this one is titled Dire Situations, Illnesses, and Emergencies, basically. So this is people who are in dire situations, who are gravely ill, in emergency situations, things that need daily prayer, um, you know, and I just, it's just a running list. It's a simple list that I date. You might be able to see through here. I date it. Um, I check them off if they're answered, things like that. Um, and so this, I keep adding on to this because, you know, people's situations change every day. And this just helps me not to forget to pray. Even if it's just a really short prayer, um, that's what I do. So, if I add on my times for the city here in the US, the world, that's 17 and a half minutes. And then this last section. So, that's basically 20 minutes of prayer time right here, roughly. And that's the end of my prayer journal here. Um... I might add to a couple sections to this. I might add a salvation section. I don't know. I'll have to. I'll have to think about that one. You know, a section where I just have for salvation of people that you know I want to be saved. But then when I start thinking about that, I want everybody to be saved. So I'm not sure how how I could do that section without it being just crazy big and writing down. You know everybody <laughs> who isn't saved so that's something I'm gonna have to ponder and if anyone has some suggestions on that I'd, I'd like to know because again my goal is not to get so overwhelmed and burdened by this that I can't do it and I end up just scrapping it um, so that's my my prayer journal um, if you have any comments or suggestions or anything on how you do yours or how you might feel mine could be improved, um, I would love to hear them. You know, again, these are all personalized um, on what works for you and what works for me. And what works for me might not work for somebody else. But, um, you know, I always enjoy hearing other people's experiences as well as tips. Um, like I said, I'm new to this. And um, so I, I really just want to learn. Um, and But so far, this has been a great help for me. And I just feel much more focused and intentional. I still do random prayers throughout the day. 
I still fall asleep at night praying and forget what I'm supposed to be praying for. You know, that hasn't changed, but this is this has changed. And this is definitely helping my life in a lot of different ways, along with Bible studies and Bible journaling and things like that. Um, so it's I really enjoy it, and I hope this gives you all some ideas. Um, okay, I'm kind of running out of words to say, so I think I'll just stop talking. <laughs> You know, because I can talk and say nothing at all. And just keep talking and saying nothing at all. Kind of like what I'm doing right now. Anyway, thank you. I hope you enjoyed this. God bless. Bye-bye.